Hi everybody, and welcome to the Enact Club's second virtual spring event. My name is Allison Kulak, and I'm co-president of the Environmental Action Club here at North Penn. Sadly, we were unable to hold our usual in-person spring event, but our club members all came together to create this virtual event for you out in the North Penn School District. We even have some special submissions this year from the chemistry and astronomy clubs here at North Penn. I want to say thank you to everyone involved in making this possible, and without further ado, I hope you all enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to make some of the best vegan brownies ever. I have to say, it's probably one of the best batch of brownies that I've ever made. They're so fudgy, they're so yummy, they're pretty easy to make, and they're vegan. Um, it's crazy that they are vegan, you can't even tell at all that they are. It's amazing because you're eating something that you love, and they're great for the environment. So I hope you make them and you enjoy. Okay, here's what you're going to need. One and a half cups of cocoa powder, one and three fourths cup of flour, one tablespoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of baking powder, one and a half cups of coconut milk, one and a half cups of brown sugar, one and a half cups of regular sugar, two tablespoons of coffee powder or instant coffee, one teaspoon of salt, one bar of dark chocolate, which is vegan, three fourths cups of vegan chocolate chips, two tablespoons of crushed chia or flax seeds, six tablespoons of water. Keep in mind that per tablespoon of ch chia or flax seeds, three tablespoons of water goes together and one fourth cups of vegan butter melted. The first step is to take your vegan butter and you're going to add it to a large mixing bowl along with your sugar and you're going to mix it until you're going to grab your chia or flax seeds. They need to be crushed. Mine were not. You can buy them crushed. So I added them in a coffee grinder along with some cinnamon. Cinnamon is totally optional. Then I added the water and then I mixed it. You need to let this sit for 10 minutes to get that goopy texture. Okay, now I'm going to just boil some hot water. While we're waiting for the water to boil, I add in my coffee and vanilla extract. At this point, please add your chia or flax seed mixture. Because I didn't, I forgot, and I added it after the flour, my mixture got kind of weird. Please make sure to add it before the flour. So I'm just chopping up some chocolate here. This will not be the one that we melt. Once your water comes to a boil, you're going to take your medium mixing bowl and then you're going to put in the coconut milk and your vegan chocolate chips and you're going to mix that until it's melted. Now you're going to add that chocolate mixture to the mixture and then you're going to sift through all your dry ingredients, your ch chocolate powder, your flour, all that good stuff. And now you can see that I add my chia mixture and it's kind of hard to mix it. So in order to save my brownies, I added a neutral oil, which was vegetable oil, and I added some water to fix that texture up. Um, and so I added my cut up dark chocolate that I did earlier and then put chips on top because why not? And then I put it in my oven, which is preheated at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. Once it finishes baking, you want to cool it for about an hour to overnight. I had mine overnight, and they're probably one of the best brownies I've ever had. And they're vegan, and I really hope that you enjoy and you really make them. school and our favorite thing to do is to go out and look for wildlife in our local woods so if you look right here we have a couple of deer footprints and over here and we have some deer over there And there, and we have some deer bones over here. Got this one, this one, this one. These are vertebrae. They come from the backbone of a deer. And these are part of the leg bones. It's awesome all the cool stuff you can find when you look around. Hi, my name is Perina Aurora, 
and today I'm going to teach you how to become one with the earth. And you might be asking, Purina, how do you become one with the earth? And kids, well, I'll teach you. So, backstory. Science is the reason we have grass, the trees, the sun, our oxygen we breathe every day. But Mother Nature is the reason why we find the earth around us, the environment around us, so beautiful. Um, like, we find flowers beautiful, we find everything beautiful. But also, we tend to miss all the details around us. You know, when we go outside, the tree is not a tree. The tree might have a squirrel's nest in it or a bird's nest in it, you know? So how to become one with the earth? It's very important to just relax. Go outside with, with a towel, sit on the grass, and just look around you. And breathe in and breathe out. And just look. Because we're not just around grass and trees. We're around so many beautiful things that we miss, you know? You know, the grass has so much life to it. All around us has life to it, you know? So just breathe in and breathe out and just observe your surroundings. And you might be surprised about what you see because, you know, I went outside and I saw a rose in the middle of my garden. I didn't see that before, but when I was outside and I was observing, I saw it. So kids, make sure to go outside with sunscreen, sun protection, and just enjoy your surroundings. Maybe run around a little bit. And that, my dears, is how you become one with the earth. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and today I'm going to be making dog toys out of old t-shirts. They're fun and super easy to make and they're also environmentally friendly because instead of throwing out old t-shirts, you get to repurpose them and make toys for your dogs. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is cut the bottom of your t-shirt. So after you cut the bottom, you're going to have one piece like this and now you just need to cut the side so it's separated into two. Now that you have these two pieces, you're gonna cut them again in order to have six strips. Here are my six pieces. It's fine if they're uneven because we'll fix them later. You're now going to pull both ends of each piece of fabric so they look like this. Now you're going to tie them all together into one big knot at the top. After tying a knot at the top, you're going to split it into three separate pieces. After splitting it into three separate pieces, you're going to start making a braid. So in order to make a braid, you get the outer piece right here, move that so it's like this, and then you get this piece right here, and you move it like this. So basically, you just try to bring the outside pieces back into the middle, and then as you go, you should pull it tight so the braid is not loose. After you're done braiding, you're going to make another knot at the end just like you did at the top. And here you have it, a dog toy made out of an old t-shirt. If you have multiple dogs, you might have to make more than one so they don't play like this. Hi, I'm Nicole Mariachi and I'm a sophomore at North Penn. And so today I'll be explaining the components and how to make some nutritious soil compost for your garden. The mixture is balanced in pH and the pH in the soil allows it to retain and hold moisture well. This mix is from the book Score Foot Gardening, the third edition. And the three main ingredients that we'll be using are peat moss, which has an acidic pH by itself, and it's an absorbent. And then we're gonna be using vermiculite, which is a mineral used to bring aeration to the soil. And then we're gonna use a blended compost and we're, we're gonna be using um, a mixture of cow manure and then mushrooms. Then the purpose of that would be to aid in aerobic and anaerobic decomposition. 
All three of these things combined will make a perfect and versatile gr growing conditions for your plants. So we're gonna go outside and then I'm gonna show you how to like mix it and what to use. So what we're gonna do now is combine these three ingredients and put into the square and then we're gonna use our gloved hands or a rake to step through and break clumps. And you wanna get these components really mixed in well and this will be our finished product. As you can see, there are no clumps. Everything looks pretty nice and mixed. And these are what we use. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. I'm Lucy Lee from North Penn High School and in this clip, I'm going to share with you guys a one minute long, very quick, very easy echo tips. So I know there's a bunch of smart, clever ones out there in social media, but let's be realistic. Let's do what we actually know and what we actually can practice. So I know a lot of you guys are using these scrap papers for your uh, math homework, chemistry homework, or any other simple math equation. And I see a lot of you guys are doing this. People just write their numbers or any other equation for their homework just in the corner in just like random room and see how many room in this paper is going to be wasted. It's actually more than a half. So here's my strategy coming. What you do is very simple. You just fold your paper into a half and that's it. Let me explain. Basically, you just divide your paper into like this and you have about 
four or more than that according to what you draw and you're only using this limited room for your one single question let me actually do my homework i will show you guys I am pretty sure, I am 100% sure that I would have been using this whole paper for just this one problem. And guess how many problems we can do in this one single page? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Total 8 problems. I understand it is a little annoying or bothering to draw a line before you do your homework but guys, currently paper, plastics or any other disposable materials are indeed provoking our earth to be polluting and I know it will have a significantly negative effect on not only our generations but also our descendants so I know it is a time for you and me and just every one of us to practice what we know and this clean green strategy Anyways, yeah, thank you so much for watching this clip and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye! Space Debris by the Astronomy Club What is space debris? Space debris, also known as space junk, is prominent in Earth's orbit or LEO. Millions of human-generated objects float very fast and can go up to 18,000 miles per hour, faster than a bullet. LEO is now viewed as Earth's largest garbage dump, with a 70% chance of spacecrafts colliding in Earth's low orbit. Facts: There are about 4,700 satellites still in space, but only about 1,800 are still working. There is an estimated 128 million pieces of space debris that is smaller than 1 centimeter. What can we do to lower space debris? Prevention of in-orbit explosions and collisions, removing space debris in orbit through nets, harpoons, and lasers, and finally, grinding space bunk and recycled materials that are brought down a 3D print radiation shielding for Gateway Earth.